Welcome to Coyote's Corner. This episode, we'll be listening to Deborah Ballou tell a Native American tale, how the flute came to the people. Once there was a boy who dreamed of being a great hunter. And though he was poor and he needed to learn how to hunt, the people of his village didn't take him very seriously and so did not teach him how to hunt. Well, one day he saw an elk and followed it deep into the forest. And he was so busy watching the elk that he wasn't paying attention to where he was going and where he had come from. And the elk much more nimble and quick than the boy, moved through the forest and got further and further ahead of the boy. And soon the boy could not see the elk, but could only hear it. He followed the sounds of the elk deeper and deeper into the forest. But it wasn't long before he could no longer hear the elk either. He stopped and he listened, but he just didn't know where the elk had gone And having not learned how to track, he did not know how to follow it. As he stood in the forest, he realized he did not know his way back home. And dark was coming, and he knew he would have to spend the night in the forest. And so he took a big branch, and he placed it against the trunk of a tree. And then he took smaller ones and placed them against it. And he put leaves inside the shelter and on top and branches of fir and spruce. And just as he was going to climb into the shelter to sleep for the night, he heard a strange sound that he had never heard before. Well, the next morning, when the boy woke up, he forgot all about the elk and decided to go in search of the sound he had heard the night before. And just as he stood beside the shelter, a red-headed woodpecker came and landed on a branch high over the boy's head and motioned for the boy to follow. And so he did. And the woodpecker flew from branch to branch, being careful not to get so far ahead of the boy that the boy could not follow. And the boy ran through the forest, weaving around the trees and the shrubs. And they went a long, long way until they came to an old cedar tree filled with holes that the woodpecker had placed there. And just as the boy stood beside the trunk of that cedar tree, the wind gently blew and he heard the sound he had heard the night before. asked the woodpecker if he could take a branch to make the sound. And the woodpecker gave his permission, and the boy took a branch, and he tried to play. And he tried, and he tried, and he tried, but he just couldn't make the sound. And so he decided to go to the top of the nearest mountain to do a vision quest, to ask for guidance that he could make the sound. And so he found his way up the mountain, hiking higher and higher. And as he did, he thought of the song that his parents had taught him, that if he needed help, he was to sing that song and help would come. So when he got to the top of the mountain, he sat down cross-legged, looking out over the valley, and he began to sing. Way, Hana, way, Hana, way, Hana, hey. Way on a way on a way on a hay. Way on a way on a way on a hay. Way hey yo way hey yo. Way hey yo way hey yo. And in the vision dream that came, 
the red-headed woodpecker appeared before the boy once again and told the boy that if he listened carefully, he could make the sound. And so the boy listened to the woodpecker's instructions. And when the dream was over, the boy took a branch of cedar and he carved it and he shaped it and he smoothed its surface and he placed the holes just so. And then he put his flute to his lips and he began to play. The boy eventually found his way back to the village, and he began to play his flute, and all of the people stopped what they were doing, and they gathered around him and listened, for they had never heard the sound before. Now the chief's daughter, a young girl who could have any young man for her husband, came to the boy and told him that if he went to her father, the chief, and offered a gift, no matter how large or small it was, it would be accepted, for with his flute he had won her heart. And that boy was rewarded not for being a great hunter, but for bringing the flute to his people. He grew to be a great chief, and all of the men of the village would take branches of cedar and make flutes and compose music for the women that they loved. And should one of those women accept one of those men in marriage, she would take the music he had composed for her, put words to it, and sing that song to their children as a lullaby. That was Deborah Ballou telling how the flute came to the people. Michael Lang sat down with Deborah to get a little background on that story. We'll listen to that interview now. Thank you, Deborah, for sharing that story with us. Now, I've heard you tell that story a lot of different places to a lot of different audiences. What is it about that story that makes you want to use it over and over again? Well, Michael, um, thank you for having me on your show. Absolutely. And, uh, well... I started telling that story years ago because I actually um, purchased a flute, a Native American flute, uh, from flute maker Jerry Willett after having heard flute music for the first time in my life when I was working on a project, a slideshow project about different topics to do with the Great Bay Stewards and stewardship. Sure. and. Um, so I loved flute music, and I bought the flute. And in the booklet that came with the flute, uh, there were excerpts of stories about how the flute came to different tribes. Right. And I fell in love with the Lakota Sioux style story, and then the Eastern Woodland Tribe type of story right. that was in the book. And each piece seemed like it was missing something. And so I put the two of them together and completed a story. And then I added later the Abenaki song that I sing in it that I learned from Abenaki storyteller. That's and when the boy is on the top of the mountain and he sings right. that song. And um, it's actually more like a chant than it is like a song. Right. But because you, you would sing what, it what over What little and over. I know of the Abenaki language, it seems like those are just kind of la 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 sort of words. More like vocables, right. yes. Yeah. And so Ann Jennison, Abenaki storyteller, had taught me how to sing it. And so I thought that would be appropriate to use there. And then I add in flute music, which is just my own renditions of whatever comes out of the flute. It's not actually sure. any particular music from any tribe. So I put all those pieces together, but the story speaks to me in the fact that 
sometimes you head down a path thinking you're going to do one thing with your life, and then it turns out that circumstances, you go a totally different direction. Sure. And that's why I love telling that story. I've been telling it probably since, in different ways, since 1998. So quite a long time. A long time. I really ha I'm in love with that story. It speaks to my life, and it speaks to many other people's lives as well. Now, when you talk about the process of creating that story, you had these two different versions that you kind of wove together mm -hmm. and how both were missing something. As a storyteller, how do you feel about taking multiple versions of something and weaving them together? Well... That probably is the only story that I've done that with. Most of the stories that I work with, they're beautiful just the way they are. Sure. And I don't believe in changing the ends of stories. I try to keep as true to the story as I can. But when you have um, other times when you're researching into different cultures and you come across pieces of things. Like was the case with this one. Which is the case with this one. Then it makes sense to weave them together, still staying true to the tradition of the culture as much as I can. Um, In this case, it's kind of a com combination of the two cultures to complete the story. Correct, because the Lakota Sioux are out west. Uh, the Eastern Woodland Tribe is actually a ge geographic area, right. not an actual tribe like Abenaki right. it's, or It's sort of a catch-all of all these people happen to live in this region, right. and their languages may ha or may not have a common root, so we'll sure. just put them all in a basket. Right. Yeah, right. And so the style flute that I play is more of the what would have been played by the tribes in the Eastern Woodland right. area. The cedar flute. The cedar flute. So that's why, I, and when I merged the two pieces together, it just seemed like that was the way it needed to be told. It's almost like the stories spoke to me sure. uh, in a way as a writer and a storyteller that made sense to put them together and I had a complete telling and something that would reach out and not only stimulate the mind of the story listener, but also touch them emotionally. And that's why I weaved. But sometimes it takes a while. That story, when I first started telling it, did not have the Apanaki song merged in with it. Uh, did not have as much music as I now right. put. Uh, I bracket the story with it, and then, and then I use the music inside so, of it as well. So even your version of it has changed and grown over time as you've used it. Yes, as I've used it, as I've worked with it, as I've grown as a storyteller myself, and uh, many of my stories as I work with them over time will be, if you heard me tell them in the first year or so of telling them, by year five or six or longer, you'll find that they've matured with age. Well, Deborah, thank you very much for sharing that story and for sitting down and talking about it. Oh, thank you for having me here. Absolutely. And for our audience listening, if you'd like to hear more of Deborah's stories, learn more about her, you can find her at her website, DebraBalu.com. You can also find her at the Seacoast Storytellers website, which is SeacoastStorytellersNH.com. That was Michael Lang sitting down with Deborah Ballou talking about her story, How the Flute Came to the People. Thank you to our audience out there for listening to Coyote's Corner. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow so you never miss a minute of what we're doing here. And as always, this has been the Coyote's Corner.